Okay, so this is part two for our introduction to ASME codes. Uh, in this section, I'm just going to explain to you one skill that you're going to need in just about every single code calculation, and that's using the materials property table. So in our ASME boiler and pressure vessel code, we have section two, part D, which is our material properties tables. And there's two of them. There's a imperial value and there's a metric value. Both of them are essentially the same, but you got to be careful that you're using the right table. They look almost identical other than one will outline um, units in degrees Celsius, one will outline units in degrees Fahrenheit, but essentially they're the exact same. We're going to use the metric properties table in this course, and they're essentially all of them are going to be the exact same for doing our lookups. So how we use this table, um, first of all, I'd encourage you to go to our Blackboard site and download the copy of the code. Um, so you have a copy there which has a section of ASME section two as the last maybe 15 or so pages. Um, so go to that document and make sure you've downloaded a copy and make use of it because that's the document that we're going to be using for our assignments and it's going to be the document that you will be using for your tests and it's the document that you're going to be using um, essentially the content of when you go to write your TSSA exams. Um, it'll just come in the packaged book from TSSA or that you bring yourself. Okay, so what you'll see is a bunch of tables that uh, just look like t tabular data. Um, and please take a look at them. And what you'll notice is that it's really a repeating set of pages, and they repeat every four pages. So we have a series of one, two, three, four, and then we see that same pattern existing again, the same sort of page, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's make use of the chart. Let's take, for example, that we want to find a material SA285C, and it's been rolled into a drum uh, from a plate, and it's at 250C Celsius. So we want to find what is the maximum allowable stress, because we're going to need that for some calculations. So. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first page out of those groupings of four pages. And what you're going to find is we have a list of all of our different materials. And we can see that right in the middle. We have different specs and grade types. And the whole page is filled with these, so you're likely going to have to scan through several pages to try and find your material. If it's not in the first grouping, don't forget you have to forward uh, pass. You have to go forward past three pages in order to get to that fourth page where it repeats again. So you're going to have always these groupings of materials, and every time you've got four pages to go through before you have your next group of materials. So you'll see those patterns repeating within these groups. And hopefully you're able to find SA285C at one of the first uh, page groupings and we should be able to move on from there. Once you've found SA285C, then we're going to do a couple things. First thing, we're going to look at the line number. So we're going to remember that this was line number three because that's going to carry over to all of the next pages that we're going to look at. So we're going to remember that line number. The other thing that we're going to do is make sure this is the right application. So we're going to look at the product form and it is a plate, so that makes sense. And as well, we're just going to look at our size and thickness. Now, not many have restrictions on the size and thickness, but if it does, 
um, it might say, oh, this is only applicable for a thickness that's greater than 25 millimeters or something like that. So doesn't look like there's any restrictions, so that's good, we move on. And where we're gonna go is to page number two. Okay, so page number two looks a little different. It lists out things like the minimum and um, tensile strength and yield strength for the material. Um, but the important thing to us is gonna be the applicability and max temperature limits, okay? so. We have this table and it indicates either a material is not permitted or it's going to be permitted to a certain temperature. And if we look at, again, we have our property for line number three, so we continue that through. And if we look at our material, we're going to look down this column for section number one. So remember that our code calculations are from section number one. So we are going to look at our column number one. And our column number one is either going to tell us that it, it is a material that's not permitted to be used in this application under section one, or it's going to tell us in this case 482 is the maximum temperature it can be safely operate it to. So we're within our limits at 250 and so at this point we move on. Okay, We're going to flip over to page number three and potentially page number four. Three and four are the same, they're just a continuation of each other. Page three and four tell us the allowable stress for the material. So again, we're going to continue on our line number across and we're going to look at where does it match our temperature. So for 250 degrees, we have a temperature right on, so that's great. And it tells us that 108, and that is our maximum allowable stress in MPA. So we're able to go to our chart and find our values. Now you'll notice that not every temperature is listed here. So the question is what happens if we don't have a temperature that's there? Okay, well we have two options. Our first option is we can take the stress at the next highest temperature that is in the table. So if we were trying to find a temperature of 340, what is the stress? And it sits here between 325 and 330. Um, our option would be to round up to 350, always up. So never down, but always up. It's the more conservative value. It's gonna to lead to a lower stress. Um, and so we would take 101 as our value. The other option that we would have is we could also interpolate between values. So we could find a interpolated value for our stress that's allowed under ASME code. Uh, however, in this course and all of your calculations and also your calculations on your TSSA exam, they take the approach to round up. So take that strategy. Okay, so we're okay now with looking up materials out of the tables and um, we can now move on to doing some of the calculations for tubing and piping and heads and interpreting the section one requirements of those code calculations.